Ladies and gentlemen, once again, please welcome Scott Huffpower. Welcome to Broadsoft Live. Every year we show some of our most innovative features in real life scenarios. This year we have a great lineup with UC1, Team1, CC1, and Hub. The situations we'll cover this morning show how Broadsoft business helps market segments from small business to large enterprises. Of course, each business segment has varying requirements and needs different configurations of Broadsoft business. Over the last year, we've looked at a variety of businesses to further refine our applications. This morning, we'll see how UC1, Team1, and CC1 each drive productivity in different ways. So let's start off with the small business segment in UC1. So the guys wanted me to tell you that there's some hotel internet issues this morning. Apparently, and I didn't know this, that the, the demos actually require internet access. <laughs> so there may be a few problems, so be, uh, be, be patient and, and considerate of the guys. So please welcome our UC1 experts, Joe Harsh and Ethan Abrams. Good morning. It is estimated that there are over 115 million active small businesses, and I can guarantee you that they are not all doing the same thing. They are attorneys, bakeries, retirement homes, web design offices, and everything in between. As a provider of services these businesses, uh, to these businesses, it can often be difficult to provide a single application that can address the specific needs of each business while continuing to provide the simplicity they so often desire. Today, we'll be showing how you can take advantage of the newest functionality in UC1 to not only better serve small businesses, but also keep your life simpler. And it all starts with being able to deploy a single app for ease of management while having that single app be extensible enough to allow for vertical specific functionality. Let's take, for example, this morning, uh, a plumbing company. In this case, we built in important vertical features and extensibility while staying true to that important directive of simplicity. I'm Chris. Hi, Chris. Hi. A plumber, and I need to see my next appointment. I bring up UC1, and there is the main screen. Is the information important to my plumbing day? So inside of UC1, we're displaying a vertically specific web page designed for plumbers but it could easily display a page for attorneys or the hospitality demo that Scott did yesterday or any other vertical that you want to target. So this is a really good example of the extensibility that lets you customize UC1 for your verticals. I can see my next appointment, but I can also initiate a communication with the customer. I'm going to go ahead and send an SMS from UC1. An SMS? You heard right, an SMS. Yes. To this customer, letting her know that I'll be arriving 15 minutes late. All right. It will arrive from my business line, so the customer does not see my personal, does not see my personal information. And the first demo of the day. Yes. All right. So it arrived. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. See you all next year. <laughs> So it arrived in, uh, in my standard iMessage app here. Uh, I didn't have to install anything as the end customer. And I can open this up and see Chris the plumber is running 15 minutes late. And I'm just going to go ahead and respond. That is OK. And as I get closer to the customer, it looks like I'll be a little early. Let me call the customer to make sure she'll be home. I have chosen to call with my business line instead of my personal line, ensuring that the customer still does not know my personal number. All right. I know that this customer will sometimes complain. So to protect myself, I'm going to go ahead and initiate a recording of the call <coughs> using an integration with Dubber. I can always replay that recording right here in UC1. 
Is this the part where I start complaining? Start? Yeah, okay, got it. <laughs> All right. At the appointment, when I get under the kitchen sink. The, the kitchen sink? Yes. We even threw in the kitchen sink. Okay. I want to make sure that I am not interrupted. I'm using a broad source app that monitors my physical interaction with the phone to dynamically configure UC1 in real time. My business line is automatically set to forward incoming calls when I set my phone face down. All right, now I'm gonna call Chris the plumber and I'm gonna call his business phone number. And what we should hear is that it's gonna roll over to Thanks for calling down and out plumbing. The main number. Please press one for emergency. All right. So uh, when someone called Chris the plumber, then that automatically forwarded the call to the main number for the plumbing company. When I'm no longer in a tight spot, my business line is switched back when I flip the phone face up. So that's great for mobile employees. They can use the one app, UC1. They can ask, access their important vertical specific web tools for scheduling. They can interact with customers using their business phone number, not their personal number, and send and receive standard text messages. And finally, they can use off-the-shelf services like those from Dubber or Broadsource to control whether they're available or not on a job. So now what about the employees that work back at the office to help those mobile workers? That's a great question. So now we will see how Rick, the office manager slash scheduler slash customer support slash I do everything at the office, uses UC1 on his desktop. Hi, Rick. Now I'm Rick. <laughs> I just received an emergency call from a customer and they need me to send someone out right away. I post a message to, in the customer emergency workspace to see how quickly one of, uh, one of the plumbers can get to the customer. Respond to that I can be there in 10 minutes. There we go. Good news is that Joe can be there within 10 minutes, and the customer is quite pleased. So these are persistent workspaces in UC1. That is awesome. So workspaces in UC1 allow groups to maintain project history and upload and access files. They work on any device, so our plumbers can bring up group data like repair manuals, parts lists, or other documents that have been uploaded to that workspace. This improves productivity and accuracy since everyone in that working group is looking at the same material. Workspaces concentrate project-related information for employees and partners alike. As is always the case, as soon as I hang up the phone, another call comes in. Here comes the other call. All right. This time, the customer is saying that they did not receive uh, the information I was supposed to send them last week. I open up the call tab to display contextual information between us. So this is Broadsoft Hub. Hub allows for a variety of cloud services to be integrated with the UC1 user experience, that one app. So more than just letting you access your inbox or your calendar or other general application data, Hub provides real-time filtering showing your data that applies to the conversation that you're having at the time. So it's the right document, the right email, the right calendar event based on who you're communicating with. Extremely powerful productivity tool. I see that I sent the information last week. I always like to confirm the email address, and as it turns out, the user changed their email address and no longer has access to their previous account. I open up the email and click forward, enter the new, address, the new email address, and send it off. This is all happening inside the UC1 tab there. Boom. The entire time, I get to stay in UC1. Because I'm all into social media like the Twitter. The Twitter? I take a quick gander to see, to see what, this, uh, what this customer has posted. And I see that he has posted something positive about our company and an employee. I thank the customer before hanging up and look forward to the next call to come in. So integrating social media through Hub allows a small business to increase their customer engagement. Acknowledging a customer's tweet, responding to some feedback, or even just commenting on their vacation tweets helps that small business stay connected to their clients. 
And Hub makes that connection much easier, contextual, real-time filtering. So that was great, and they all worked, so that's cool. Uh, what we've seen here are several examples of how UC1, application integration, and Hub can be leveraged by that small business. Through the extensibility of web links, the main app page, and uh, the tabs, these are a few of the features in UC1 that allow for a single app to be deployed while taking advantage of different configurations to target different verticals. And bringing it full circle, you can deploy that as a single app while still providing multiple integrations to address different vertical market segments. Pretty awesome. Combine that with the inherent simplicity of UC1 for unified communications, and you too can provide an easy to use, vertical focused solution. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Back to Scott. Thanks, Joe and Ethan, for demonstrating how UC1 can improve productivity, efficiency, and the end user experience. Now, as companies grow to 50 plus employees, they begin to require teams that are more distributed, mobile, and operate across functions and time zones. In this context, mid market companies all face a common problem in making sure their teams are as, pr as productive as possible. This need for productivity spans communications among internal employees, as well as communications with external customers. And there's a strong desire to bring together asynchronous collaboration tools like Team One with real-time communications. Let me introduce Tony Lopresti, our expert on team collaboration, to share how we're evolving Team One to address these needs. Hello everyone, it's great to be back. Last year we launched Team One at Connections and it's been a super exciting year since. We've onboarded over 130 service providers representing 30 countries and are proud to have three of the top five largest providers in the world committed to launch. From a product perspective, we've made a ton of key investments for our users. We've refreshed our UX, internationalized the app, and microsites and enhance many of our collaboration features. One additional focus area was to bring more real-time communication capabilities directly into Team One. Specifically, you told us to embed a web conferencing experience directly into the application. That's what we did, and it's pretty awesome. Every Team One workspace now has a dedicated meeting room powered by our newest application component, Broadsoft Meet. Whenever a team wants to meet live, they can hop into that experience with just a click or a tap. For this portion of Broadsoft Live, I'm going to share my day-to-day -day use of Team One to illustrate how I use Team One to coordinate with my globally distributed software development team. So every day, I come into my development team workspace here to catch up on what's going on. You may remember from last year that Team One workspaces are virtual rooms where teams of people can catch up on the work and be more productive. You may have noticed that we've significantly updated the application UI in the past year in an ongoing mission to ensure that Team One is the simplest and easiest application available. As you can see in this workspace, there's a lively discussion going on. Last year, I showed you how I could participate in a workspace by posting messages, sharing files, and tracking tasks. Now, workspaces include live meetings. So it looks like there's a live meeting going on in this workspace. Like in the physical world where I can walk the halls and see what rooms have meetings, in Team One I can similarly see that Cindy and Rod and Jean and Regan are all in this meeting virtually. So I think I'm going to click and join the meeting here and see what they're up to. So give one moment for uh, our meetings experience to launch here. You will now be placed into the conference. All right. So you guys look great here. And uh, HD video quality on a really bad internet connection. What do you guys think, guys? 
<laughs> hey, guys. Hello. Hello. It looks like you're working hard. Sorry to interrupt, but I'm at Connections explaining how we've integrated Broadsoft Meet into Team One. Can you guys say hello to the audience? Hey, audience. Hi, hello, Connections. <laughs> so, Cindy, since I have you, do you mind explaining some of the cool new features of our meetings experience? Sure. Give me one second. Let me pull up a slide to share with you. I'm just going to share my screen. Thank I'm you. I'm loving our new cloud meeting, integrated cloud meeting experience. It's so simple. I can start or join a meeting from Team One in seconds. It literally just takes one click in the workspace. Mm. You mentioned the HD quality, as everyone can see now. It's really amazing. You can see and hear every little detail. And I'm loving the smart guest access, too. So of course, workspace members can join a meeting, but you can also share a join link with people outside of your workspace for those uh, freelancers or contractors that you're collaborating with. There's screen sharing, moderator controls, and most importantly, it's a mobile-friendly app. With Broadsoft Meet integrated in Team One, we've really created a more flexible and intelligent way to work. We really love it. This is really great stuff, Cindy. And I really like seeing everybody here in, in HD quality. And Rod, I don't know where you are, but it looks like you're having more fun than, than I am here up on stage. <laughs> so uh, by the way, sorry I barged in on your discussion. What were you guys talking about here before I rudely interrupted? Tony, you, you, you weren't interrupting. You're late. Anyway, we were talking about the search interface. We were making some changes to it. If you remember, we were talking about that last week. So uh, just uh, shared a, uh, a link to that in the workspace. So you can take a look at that if you want. OK, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check it out. Let me just reorganize my screen here. So it looks like here it is. Let me just pull it up. So, um, Gene, is this, is this going to be about the new search UX that we're working on? It is. Actually, uh, like I said, I just had Ron, our UI guy, uh, just put these mocks together because we had been talking about some new ideas Rod shared from us last week, and we were just going through it now. Can you, um, you know, it looked really interesting. Can you, can you take me through this on our, on our whiteboarding application? Sure. I'll share a link to you in just a second. Great. So I've actually uh, just uploaded a link here to the workspace. You can click on the link and join my whiteboarding session. I'll take you through it on my iPad. Thanks, Gene. I appreciate it. Do you mind sharing another link, Gene? Uh, let's see here. So while we're waiting for Gene to share the link, I'll provide a little context for our Connections audience. One of our continued investment areas is around making it easier for teams to integrate applications they use every day with Team One workspaces. So as an example, we've partnered with a really cool company called Explain Everything that has a whiteboarding product that uses our various APIs to integrate their app into Team One. So I like to think about what they do as supercharged document collaboration. So it looks like the whiteboarding application is launched. Can we switch over to Gene's iPad? And, uh, and Gene, if you could take me through this on your iPad. OK. Um, so let's see. I wanted to just quickly set some context. So uh, you know, here's our uh, you know, existing search UI, right? So. What we decided we wanted to do first was we, we took the search bar and we decided we wanted to move it over to the left to better align with the search results we already do on the left-hand side. This actually has the added benefit of making a little bit more room for the workspace itself so we can show more there. Um, actually, I have an example of that. Rohan put uh, an example of that together uh, right here. So you can see that. The other thing we did was the search results interface itself. So what we decided to do was instead of having it drop down, we actually decided to put it in its own dialog and just uh, flesh out some of the results views as well. So as you can see, we actually have also really started featuring the people and workspace results views. So can we bring the display back to my laptop? I have a quick question here for Gene. 
So um, I'm wondering, Gene, um, you know, I see some, some uh, icons uh, around, around calling. Are we able to make calls directly from Team One? Uh, yeah, absolutely. The new integrated calling functionality that we're building into Team One is available directly through the search results interface, Tony. Wow, that's awesome. This makes total sense now, Gene. And this is really, truly next generation collaboration, guys. So I'd love to show this to Jamie and Scott. Can you make a recording of this? Well, actually, I anticipated you were going to do this. So I actually created a recording. I, I, I hit the record button before we started, and I'm actually uh, going to share a recording of this in Team One right after we're done. Sounds good. So I'm going to let you guys get back to work. Say goodbye to the audience here. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. So as always, I've captured everything from my meeting in a, in a workspace, the team files, the notes, the tasks. And it looks like um, a, the Team One bot has just responded back with a recording from our, our whiteboarding session a few moments ago. I know uh, for me it was a little bit uh, fuzzy because of the internet connection. But the good news is that I have a recording right here to, to watch it for later. So, um, so let me wrap up here. With our new Broadsoft Meet component, updated UX and powerful integrations capabilities, we've enhanced Team One to power team productivity before, during, and after meetings. Combining real-time communication with Team One workspaces makes today's workforce more effective regardless of where they are, when they're working, what devices they're using, or what companies they're a part of. So don't forget to spend time with our team today in the exhibit hall where you can learn not only about Team One, but also about our partner Explain Everything. So with that, I'll hand the floor back to Scott. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Thank you, Tony, for showing how we're seamlessly integrated real-time communications with team collaboration. As the complexity of a business increases, the user experience needs to adapt to improve productivity. Call centers are an important part of larger enterprises, and efficiency and productivity of the individual agent are key to driving up revenue and driving down the cost of customer care. By introducing artificial intelligence apps into the customer support experience, CC1 automates some of the agent workflow. Let's take a look at CC1 and bring up our experts, Amit Verma and Ramesh Baba. Good morning, and thank you all for joining us here today. And I think we can all agree it has been a fantastic conference thus far, right? That's right. And we are excited to share our latest CC1 advancements with you this morning. As you have heard, the past 12 months have been very exciting for us at CC1. And we believe the next 12 months are going to be even more so given the accelerating levels of customer activity and partner interest that we are, well, seeing across the globe. From a product perspective, we are continuing to add new and exciting features to the solution to strengthen our position to, uh, in the mid-market and the large enterprise uh, arena. OK, let's get to the demo. I did warn Cheryl that if the demos don't work, I'm blaming the internet. <laughs> Uh, today, we are going to show you some of the exciting new capabilities we are adding to CCU and product suite. Specifically, we're going to show you four things. Managing new interaction channels being used by customers and users these days. Uh, using the latest in voice technologies to secure customer information. Leveraging the latest in artificial intelligence to improve customer experiences. And augmenting our ability to provide insights from structured as well as unstructured data. To help facilitate the, the demo today, I'm joined by my colleague Amit Verma here, uh, who will be playing the role of a contact center agent. For my part, I'll be playing the role of a customer who needs help uh, and service from the contact center. We've also created a fictitious enterprise called Millennial Wireless, so, and I'm a customer of theirs. So if you see that being referenced during the demo, it's related to the demo. OK. So I'm on my phone. 
And I've received an email from Millennial Wireless confirming that my order for a new iPhone X is being processed. Well, there's only one problem with this. I never ordered one. I'm guessing my account has been hacked into. Luckily, as a CC1 enterprise, Millennial Wireless has access to the latest in channels to interact with its customers. For instance, in this case, I see a link in this email that I can use to connect with the contact center using Facebook Messenger. Our implementation of the Facebook Messenger has an added capability we are working on that delivers uh, automated chatbot interactions uh, using Google's AI engine. So when I first start interacting with the contact center, I'm actually talking to an AI engine, not a human being. Howdy. So as you can see, the AI engine was able to recognize howdy as a greeting and respond in an appropriate way. I need help. My account has been hacked. So the AI engine was able to uh, interpret a colloquial words such as hack and assess that the situation was of a critical nature and requires a human intervention. So now I'm being connected to Amit, who is a contact center agent. Amit is logged into our new CC1 agent desktop, which has been redesigned uh, to, to allow agents to more seamlessly handle interactions across channels. Okay, I've received Ramesh's message. Let me respond to him. Luckily, the CC1 agent desktop includes full omni-channel interaction history for each of the customers. I can use this functionality to find the order confirmation email. There it is. Hmm. Let me let Ramesh know I've found the email and I'm going to do my best to resolve his issue. Okay, so now I need to figure out how to resolve the issue. CC1 agent desktop includes functionality that is called process guides. I can look up the process guide for fraudulent orders and follow the instructions to resolve the issue. I can access process guides by clicking on the top right of the agent desktop. And it appears that the instructions want me to access an external system where I can look at the order and make changes to it. Looks like the order has not been shipped yet and I can cancel it. Let me go ahead and do that. There, I've canceled the order. Great. So Amit has resolved my issue. The process guide instructions also indicate that the customers use voice biometrics to secure access to their account. In conjunction with our partner Inference, we, uh, we have added voice biometrics as a feature to CC1 this year, where users can use their voice to secure access to their accounts. Much in the same way we all have fingerprints, we also have voice prints, which are based on the sound and intonation of our voice. Let me send Ramesh the instructions for setting up voice biometrics. All right, I received Amit's message. Let me call the number to enroll in the voice biometric system. Welcome to Millennial Wireless Voice Biometrics Enrollment Service. Please say your name after the tone. Press the pound key when you are finished. Ramesh Boba. Thank you. Your voice print has been enrolled into the system. All right, just to make sure that the system is working, let me call the main number for Millennial Wireless to see if it will recognize me based on my voice print. Welcome to Millennial Wireless. Please state your name to confirm your identity. Hello, my name is Ramesh Boba. Thank you, Ramesh. Ah, oh, sorry, I dialed the wrong number. <laughs> I I the right now. Welcome to Millennial Wireless. Please state your name to confirm your identity. Hello, my name is Ramesh Boba. Thank you, Amesh. Your you voice go. print has been authenticated. All right. This is pretty cool. This actually works. There are additional... <laughs> 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 so there are additional features we are adding to the, to the system. What are we doing next, Amit? 
So let's turn to some innovative capabilities we've added to CC1 to make the contact center supervisors more productive. Contact centers are highly dynamic environments. Supervisors need to identify and react to trends that are impacting customer experience. To facilitate these needs, we have added advanced speech analytics to CC1. In conjunction with our partner Calabrio, we are able to automatically analyze the transcripts of all interactions across channels for key attributes. For voice, the CC1 call recording is used, speech is converted to text, and then the text is analyzed. This is the CC1 speech analytics interface. It is fully customizable based on the user's preference. On the top left, you see a word cloud that shows the different keywords that are appearing in interactions. The larger the word appears in the word cloud, the more frequently it is appearing in interactions. And as you can see here, the keywords canceled, wrong order, and hacked appear to be occurring most frequently. Here is something interesting. On the top right, we see a visualization that shows the different interactions uh, classified by type. As you can see here about quarter of all the interactions are related to cybersecurity, which is very high. Below that, the line chart is showing that these type of interactions have been on the rise over the last month. Supervisors can use these insights and take corrective action. For example, based on the density of calls related to fraudulent orders, the call center can more broadly utilize voice biometrics to make the customer accounts more secure. Thanks, Amit. So as we saw today, CC1 is continuing its rapid evolution as a full solution for modern contact centers. Just to recap, today we saw our ability to handle new communication channels like Facebook Messenger, our thinking around how we can leverage AI and machine learning to improve customer experiences, our investments in ensuring that contact centers can secure customer account information, and lastly, the expansion of our analytics capability to include detailed interaction analysis. These are certainly exciting times for us at CC1. The product is growing rapidly in terms of its feature functionality, geographic reach, and market footprint. We definitely thank those of you who have already adopted CC1, and we're excited to engage with those who are either assessing us or have yet to take a look at our solution. Please feel free to join us at the booth uh, today during the show, and we would love to chat with you some more about CC1. Thank you all. Thank you, Ramesh and Amit. By securely delivering new channels, bots, and analytics, CC1 helps drive revenue and cost improvements for the large enterprise. And these new integrations open up huge potential for this segment. Broadsoft Hub is our application integration solution that brings cloud apps like Google G Suite and Salesforce into Broadsoft business user experiences. Productivity tools have come a long way since the days of the Apple Newton. Technology has finally caught up with expectations, and these tools are now robust productivity enhancers. In this demo, we're showing how we take productivity to the next level with a business assistant. Please join me in welcoming our experts, Joe Baird and Nathan Stratton. Well, good morning. It's exciting to be here. Um, Connections is always a time that Nathan and I look forward to each year to be able to show you guys some of the new technology we've been working on here at Broadsoft. And as Scott alluded to, we're going to talk about some assistant technology this morning. And as many of you know, voice assistants have come a long way since Siri's introduction in 2010. Now, a lot of the personal assistants that you see from Google, Apple, and Amazon, they're really the use cases are more focused on personal elements, right? So we, what we have is the opportunity really to take the personal assistant and have it more focused on our business activities. And so the common things that you see with activities such as um, ordering um, from a, excuse me, ordering from a restaurant or actually seeing a um, book, um, we're more focused really on the business communication side of that. Now the future of Broadsoft Business really is to simplify the business communications experience and applying those analytical insights to the calling, messaging, and the meeting experience. So we really can take those historical patterns and improve the future communications. Introducing the Hub Assistant. 
Now, the Hub Assistant simplifies the business communications by creating an intuitive interface really to manage your personal productivity. Now, making your meetings more productive, activating and configuring features, support questions, as well as ultimately digging more into the data to get deeper insights. Now, the core of the Hub Assistant is our own internally developed AI and machine learning engine called Hub AI. Now, Hub AI leverages our own advanced NLP scoring and data modeling technology and manages uh, basically a lot of the unique things that we get from our cloud services from Google and Amazon. Now, open source components we also have in there, but always we have the Hub app integrations. Now, our demos today are going to really focus more on common problems and how Hub AI solves these problems. Now, let's start with the ever-demanding productivity problem. How do we do more with less? Less time and less effort. Now, for example, how the Hub Assistant can manage your calendar, meetings, tasks. All right, so we're going to look at also in a few minutes how we increase adoption. Now we're going to look at the user base, right? So a lot of times we have a lot of challenge with getting them to access our functionality, but we're going to leverage data and machine learning really to improve that communications experience by really contextualizing that data for the end user. Now we're going to get started with our first demo around personal productivity. Now for many of us, the Palm Pilot has been a staple for us since 1996. And while touch screens and larger displays have improved the mobile, experience, really power tasks are still cumbersome. And really in a lot of ways it's downright dangerous if you're driving. Now the power of the Hub Assistant is brought to bear on scenarios that require complicated interactions and app switching. Now you've already seen some innovations from Broadsoft here in the past where we have single touch conference join as well as some of the call kit advancements from the UC1 Connect solution. But what we're going to do is take that to the next level. Now in our first demo, Nathan is going to show you how the Hub Assistant can manage the calendar using natural voice commands. So you can interact with the Hub Assistant in a natural way. Now Hub AI will also be able to detect that there is a conflict in his calendar and be able to suggest to him a better schedule and how to actually handle that conflict. What's my day look like today? Clearly, this is an internet issue. What's my day Although look like today? Although you saw no other issues earlier, this is an internet connectivity issue. Joe, let me turn off the Wi-Fi. OK. So let me kind of just dive a little bit into what we're actually going to see with this. So what Nathan is doing is he's actually going in, he's going to ask the hub assistant, what does his day look like? What does my day look like today? You have four meetings and your first meeting is at 8.30 a.m. titled Budget Status Review. I noticed you have overlapping meetings. What's the conflict? At 2.30 p.m., you have a meeting titled Connections Demos, and at 3 p.m., you have a meeting titled Operations Review. What would you like me to do? Cancel Operations Review. Okay. To confirm, you would like to cancel the 3 p.m. meeting with the title Operations Review, correct? Yes. Okay. The meeting cancellation has been sent. Okay. Great, and thanks for your assistance. Happy to be of service. Well, Y'all kind of killed my line. If there wasn't enough applause, I was going to be like, well, Nathan, we're going to build some momentum here. And but I, I appreciate that you guys have seen that this is really some cool stuff. Now, something else that we'll talk about here in a few minutes is the fact that this is all real live data. This is none of this is smoke in the mirrors in the background. This is all actually happening. Now, one of the things that we want to talk about is how Hub Assistant can actually help us increase adoption with Broadsoft features. So Nathan's going to demonstrate again through natural language how we can actually enable a feature. Now this is not going to be a situation where he has to hunt through a menu list. He doesn't actually have to say a specific word. He's going to use natural language to speak to the Hub Assistant and it'll actually do what he wants it to do. 
Now, what Nathan is going to do is he's going to tell the hub assistant to hold my calls. Now, what we do is we translate that into enable do not disturb. Now, this would be accomplished without actually opening that settings interface, as I mentioned. And additionally, we're going to use AI to analyze the calendar to suggest proactive actions. Now, you're going to notice on the two outside screens that we're going to have the desktop settings actually open. So on the left-hand side, you'll actually be able to see the Do Not Disturb being turned on. I'm going into a meeting, so hold all my calls. OK. I will enable your Do Not Disturb feature. I notice that your meeting is around one hour long. Would you like me to disable this feature after your meeting? Yes. Your Do Not Disturb feature has been enabled and I will disable it in one hour. Okay. Well, so that may seem simple, right? But what, what Hub AI is actually doing there is he's going in and it's, it's assessing why does Nathan want to hold his calls. It's actually looking at his calendar and it's determining he's actually walking into a meeting so then what it's going to do is it's going to suggest that proactive action of turning it off for him. Now the reason why we're doing things like this is that we know that Dave has to deal with lots of these issues of why does my phone not work, right? It's because Do Not Disturb has been left turned on. So we recognize these as issues that we're dealing with today and we're going to use Hub AI to be able to detect those and be proactive in avoiding those situations. Now what we're going to do is we're going to shift gears a little bit to a support use case. All right, so everyone knows training our users to get the most out of our platform can be very challenging. Now let's see how we can have a user ask Hub Assistant to be able to enable a feature for UC1. Now notice that Nathan is not going to ask about a specific feature like simultaneous ring, which requires a level of domain knowledge that not all of our users actually have. What he's going to do is he's going to pose a question in layman's terms and then the hub assistant is going to ask a clarifying question to determine exactly what he's looking for. Nathan? How do I make my cell phone ring when someone calls my office phone? Do you also want your office phone to ring? Yes. That feature is called simultaneous ring. Would you like me to enable it for you or provide you a help article? The help article is fine. OK, here is the link. Great. Now, if Nathan wanted to there, he could actually click on that link. It would open up YouTube, and you'd be able to see how to enable that feature. Now, if everyone recalls from the first demo, the Hub Assist was able to view Nathan's calendar and to access that relevant information and take action. Now, but what about when there's multiple participants, let's say in a meeting? So in this demo, Nathan's going to show you how the Hub Assistant is able to access multiple calendars and to be able to simplify a common use case of scheduling a follow-up meeting. Now you'll notice on the monitors here, what we're going to see is Nathan's My Room session. So we have some people in that room, and what you'll be able to do then is schedule a follow-up meeting for those participants. Load here in a second. Okay, we'll use the iPhone. Please schedule a follow-up meeting for all participants on this call tomorrow at 1 p.m. Do you want me to use the same title and location for the follow-up meeting? Yes. I checked the schedules and that time will not work for everyone. How about tomorrow at 2 p.m.? Sounds good. Okay, meeting invitation is on its way. Okay, and, and as you can see, the meeting has been added to all three participants' calendars. Yeah. So uh, while that desktop demo didn't work perfectly there, it actually goes to show it actually is in true context, right? Because Nathan's on the call. It knows that he's actually in my room there, and so it actually did apply it to that specific situation. Okay, thank you, Nathan. That was great. Thank uh, you, Joe. I hope everyone is excited as we are about the potential of the Hub Assistant, really to transform how our customers interact with our technology and services. Let's hand it back to Scott. Thanks, Joe and Nathan. 
So, we've seen Broadsoft business help companies of all sizes. SMS and UC1 improves productivity for small businesses. Workspaces and real-time meetings have come together in Team 1 to speed projects and decision-making in the mid-market. And artificial intelligence and bots drive CC1 and individual efficiency. Let's give the team a hand. And that's half the picture and half of Broadsoft Live. To capitalize on these opportunities, we need to focus on selling, onboarding, and adoption of these services. As Tahir highlighted yesterday, we're expanding Powered by Broadsoft with new tools and programs to help you move your customer base forward.